Hello and welcome back to the Not Old Farm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Today's video an exclusive interview with Manchester City and Scotland prospect Louis Fiorini, currently on loan at Lincoln City, just after selling his loan move to the English League One club earlier this month. You might have already seen him if you're a long-time subscriber of the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please do remember to do so so you continue to see content like this and help us continue to make content like this. Um, this was one of the first interviews we did on this channel back in September times, uh, September, October time last year, uh, just before the Scotland under-21s were announced and he had made uh, the loan move to Holland with Nat Breda in the Dutch second tier. Before I even got to to release that interview, um, he stated his intentions for the under 21s and managed to get into the under 21s. Um, in the last year, has sort of been an upward trajectory from in that sort of last 10 month period. Played pretty much most weeks for Matt Breda in the second half of last season, was one of the star players for them as they narrowly missed out the promotion to their divisi. And now is back in England with Lincoln, who are hoping to push for promotion to the English Championship. Lewis himself personally signed a new deal at Manchester City until 2026. And with sort of senior players in the under 21s like Alan Campbell and Lewis Ferguson dropping out uh, due to age in the midfield area, uh, Lewis is likely to become one of the senior players in what is a pretty young academy based group at the minute. So plenty covered in this from his Scotland ambitions to his loan move. But out of sight, out of mind in Holland, perhaps, as well, which is something perhaps another Scottish uh, midfielder out there can relate to. But all of that covered in this video. We hope you do enjoy. Do remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time. We obviously signed the new deal, so congratulations as well. But um, how's the sort of the last year been since you, you were last on here? Uh, yeah, it's been amazing, really, like for the football. Um, I couldn't have asked for much more, to be honest. Like, especially the second half of the season. In Breda, like, played every game, almost every minute. Like, having a big effect and came one of the crucial parts of the team towards the end. Um, the only the only thing was obviously missing out on the promotion. We lost the final, but other than that, I couldn't ask for much more. Were you expecting it? I know you were obviously, Man City we were sent you over there with the ambition of playing a lot of minutes but did you expect to play pretty much I mean there was a pretty much the winter time you were playing every week yeah um, obviously that was my aim like going over there obviously go over to play football but um, obviously I I didn't really know I was stepping into the unknown a little bit and obviously I didn't really know what to expect but obviously it was very challenging and it did take some time but then once I got into the team like I knew as long as I keep performing and keeping at my level that I'll I'll keep playing and the manager will keep playing me and then over time I think the trust just built like when I had like about 10, ge 10 good games in a row then it was a case of like I was a no-brainer to play even if I did have a bad game um, so I think I just earned everyone's trust really and respect and obviously by the end come April, May like I was one of the the main men is that a bit of a, um, I don't know, I can't claim to know what Dutch media and things like that is like, but I can imagine like over that neck of because I, I know they're, they were in the second tier and stuff, but they're a pretty like, decent sized club over there. So I can imagine even over there you were getting a, a bit of attention. Yeah, yeah, they're a huge club, definitely like the fans, the stadium, like they belong in the top division for me. And obviously it was a shame we missed out on that. But yeah, I think obviously. I was appreciated over there and it wasn't until the last game really when the fans were in where I really realised how much they appreciated me like going around in the stadium after the game and obviously they're asking me to go back and different things like that that was obviously refreshing to see so I think obviously my time over there like I loved it um, I think the pandemic obviously stopped some of the experience that I could have had like the full stadium and just day-to-day -day life but I'll always look back at it as a good time in my career um, yeah I felt I felt loved yeah, Good start I know um, speaking to um, last year speaking about sort of the Scotland under 21s and I thought I didn't even get to put out the interview by the time you were in the Scotland under 21s yeah. 
and you were already there. Um, but there's a new rotation, obviously, of that coming around. And you'd like to think you're probably playing the, the minutes you are senior level, and you're probably going to be one of the more established guys in there. Yeah, well, I hope so. Uh, obviously, the start of the campaign in September, so I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, it was nice last year to obviously be in around that group. Obviously, I was very young, like going into that team, and obviously, I managed to get my debut as well. So, yeah, that was another good point of last season. Yeah, were well, Alan Campbell, Billy Gilmore, and that still around the, the squad? I think they were, weren't they? Sort of. The... Yeah, so obviously, there was a lot of guys with a lot of experience, like you had players like Lewis Ferguson as well, Ross McCorey. So, obviously, lads who have played a lot of games now and are playing, obviously, for the most part in the Scottish Premier League. Um, obviously Billy as well doing what he's doing now it's it's good to see yeah. Yeah. he's not the only one signing big long term deals and stuff at the Premier League clubs yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no I, I mean it's, it's a good group you've got because looking at even the squads from the, the games at Dumbarton last month there's a lot of guys in there that perhaps not as experienced yet there's a lot of guys I think um, is Kieran Slicker in there from- yeah he was in there yeah um, so there's a few guys as well from Liverpool's academy I've seen in there. So it's quite a young group, but um, yeah, really talented. No, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And obviously, you had the three lads who are with the senior squad for the Euros. Obviously, still el- eligible to play. Obviously, I think they. Obviously, in my opinion, I think they should stay with the senior squad now, whether they do or not. Um, I think obviously Billy is a no-brainer now after his performance. David Turnbull, Nathan Patterson, I think they're ready as well to try and put their mark on the squad. Um, so, yeah. Is that a bit? I know you've not, like, kind of claimed to work with them day-to-day or things like that, but like, having trained with them just a wee bit, is it a bit bizarre? To sort of, especially Gilmore's performance at um, Wembley and stuff, a bit bizarre. Yeah. Well, to be honest, I only went away with Billy once, so I don't know him as well. Um, it's probably... But- yeah, probably Phil Foden, probably for you as the one in that game. That yeah. Um, well, definitely with Nathan, because we played together 19 a couple of times. And then, obviously, when I went away with the 21s a few times, he was, like, one of my best mates in the squad. So, obviously, that was nice to see. And um, I went up to watch the game against Czech Republic. Um and obviously, I was behind the dugout, kind of. And when he was coming back from warming up, like, he noticed me. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, that was nice and obviously good to see him in and around the squad. It's probably, I know um, Stephen O'Donnell was doing his best, like, Cafu impression and things like that. At yeah. He's probably got a, a decent wee run at it. Um, one, I think Stephen's, I think he's approaching like 28, 29 now. So, I mean, probably be a good chance for him to have a run at that in a few years. Yeah, definitely. I think long term, he's got a great chance. Obviously, whether it's as soon as September. We don't know, but I think definitely like he can offer a lot, like as an attacking fullback. Um, but yeah, hopefully he can get. Well, he made, he got his debut didn't he, in the last game, but hopefully he can really start to play games for Scotland. It's good for you, I know. Obviously, um, it's good for the English guys to see they can play for Scotland as well with the amount we had in the team. Um, yeah, but um, shows you the pathways there. I, I suppose that it's um, that perhaps wasn't there a few years ago. No, yeah, definitely. You can see, obviously, like you got like Shea Adams, players like that. Um, but I think also, obviously, the young players that Scotland got coming through now, I think, starting to produce a lot more, like better young players, which is good to see. So, yeah, hopefully, the the future's bright. Mm-hmm. It seems like we're going in the Basque region as well, with you and Irene. That was the one that <laughs> caught the Yeah. The last one, just, yeah, that is a yeah, that is a bit of a bizarre one. Yeah, more on you then. Um, probably the past week has been um, quite busy for you. Um, yeah, so obviously signing with City last week and then straight to Lincoln. Um, obviously it's been a good week and like I said before, just settling in here, uh, getting to know everyone. But I'm enjoying it. It seems like a good club and. Good lads as well, so should be a good season. Twenty twenty six is a fairly decent commitment from from City. I mean, where does that that take you in your mid twenties? Yeah, so come the end of that, I'll probably be about twenty four. Um, so obviously that was nice. 
like nice for me because obviously it shows their thoughts on me and their intentions. Um, so yeah, obviously that that's nice to get that news when I found out. But for me, I just want to go and play football. Like it doesn't mean that I rest on my laurels now just because I know I'm quite secure until then. I just want to go and have a another good season and show people what I can do. Yeah, I'm assuming it was never the. I'm assuming you probably could have stayed in the City Academy but after the season you had last year. It was probably you were always going to be looking to get to get senior minutes. It'd have been a step backwards if you'd have stayed there. Yeah, of course. Um, from the first day, like I left on loan last year, I knew this was like the kind of pathway for me. And everyone's different, like in their pathway. Some people like to stay, or some people move on permanently. But I think, obviously, if I can have another good loan this year in League One then maybe next year I can make the progression again, maybe to the championship or obviously who knows. But and then obviously at the same time, there's always that chance of playing for City as well. Mm, yeah. yeah there's obviously, I think, um, who was it that came up here? Probably? Alexander Robertson is up here. Yeah, that's it for Ross, Ross County, is it? Aye, Ross County. He's been there three days and I've shut down because of COVID. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but no, I said that that seems to be... It's not maybe quite as many players as Chelsea, but it's sort of going down that route of the players are getting signed 16, 17, then going out and loan for three or four or having a run at the first team. Yeah, definitely, because it's like, for me, I just look at City's first team squad and you've got about 25 world-class players. So it's obviously fitting into that and getting game time. It's, it's tough. And obviously, like I said before, everyone has a different opinion and, a different idea of where they want to be. But for me, I just think playing games at my age now, so young, is so valuable. So then when I come to 20, 21, I've got 100 games. And that sets me up in fight for my rest of my career, really. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming uh, League One will be a bit different from, from uh, Holland, where you were. Yeah, I'm expecting yeah, a lot more physicality anyway. But like the standard of the league last year was was good. Like it took me by surprise, really. Like the teams up towards the top. Like obviously some good players and good teams. Um, obviously, I think the physical element and physical demands will be what is the big step up going into this season. Yeah, because there are some fairly big teams, and you've also got the um, what do we call them up here? The Colts teams, if you were the the B teams are like PSV and things like that in that league as well. Yeah, exactly. So, obviously, when you play teams like that, like your Ajax and PSV, obviously, they're the next best talents in Holland. So, obviously, they're all and they're all similar to my age. So, um, obviously, that's good for me to see how I compare to them. And um, Obviously, all clever lads and obviously good players. That's why they're at the big clubs in Holland. So, yeah, it's, it is a good standard and I think it's a good stepping stone for young players to go yeah. and yeah. move don't on to the next. You don't see a lot of the Scottish players. I know Alan Hickey's away um, and there's a few at, at Byam um, from the Celtic Academy, but there's not a lot of like, UK talents perhaps. Um, I know Holland's quite a good one for English Academy players recently, but there's not a lot of folk like yourself who've stepped out of that comfort zone of the EFL or academies to, to go abroad. Yeah. No, well, for me, like I said, it's I don't really mind. For my first loan, it weren't a case of where it is or what standard. It's just getting out there and doing it and playing men's games because that's real. And obviously from there then, like you just slowly start to build your way up. And obviously at some point, I think obviously everyone will find the level. So hopefully I can keep rising as high as possible. Yeah, I can imagine uh, more come away. It's probably a bit different um, from some of the places you were last year. Yeah, exactly. So, but I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's going to bring my football on in a different way. Um, and obviously, it's nice to be closer to home and obviously more in like the English eye and in the UK. Um, whereas, obviously, in Holland, there's still obviously a lot of attention, a lot of people watching and noticing what I do. But obviously, when you're that far away, it can go a bit unnoticed. Um, so it'll be nice to be back home and back playing. I think sometimes people think that's like a common misconception when like, um, playing abroad, like you don't get noticed, but like 
Ryan Gold's probably a good example. He was one of the best players in Portugal last season and never even get remotely near the Scotland squad. So even though yeah, that's a good setting stone, I think. But you do go under the it, you get more noticed at Lincoln basically than you do Matt Breda, which probably isn't right. Yeah, exactly. Like I think people who are obviously back home in the UK kind of look at it as I don't know, like they don't look at it in the same way as maybe someone playing in League One or in the championship. Um which is kind of understandable because you're not really aware of the level. Um, but obviously, like, playing in, like you said, Portugal's top division is a very good level. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure why it is, really. But it always seems to happen. How have the um, first... Wait, are you a bit late into pre-season with them? Are they started long? Um, they started... No, so just a few days before... I came, so not long really. That's not too bad then. Is it a bit different from what it was um, over in Holland? I can imagine probably a wee bit more running. Yeah, a bit more, just a bit more professional. I, I think I'm finding it so far. Like, obviously, Matt Brady was a great club and I loved it there, but I just think like there's a step up in terms of like standard and like just day to day, like what's expected of you. Um, yeah, that's the main thing I've found. Who is in um, sort of your area of the park? Is it like Liam Bridcut, I think, one? Um, Springs- yeah, he's in there. So, obviously, yeah, there's a few experienced guys and just got a new player in today, Chris Maguire from Sunderland. Mm-hmm. So, there is quite a strong Scottish contingent in there. The only thing I can claim with Chris Maguire is he used to go to my primary school. Um, we yeah. were, he's a wee bit older than me. Um, should I mean, what's the target for Lincoln this season? Um, um, promotion? I think, yeah. I think that's always got to be the goal, though, for anyone going into the season. Obviously, you've got to be realistic. Uh, I think for Lincoln, it's the case of, like, there is some big hitters in this league in terms of money-wise, obviously more, like, bigger budgets. Like, obviously, you've got your Sunderlands, like, your Sheffield Wednesday. Obviously, have a lot more resources, but I think the manager and obviously the style of play is what can really set teams apart. Yeah, as I'm very like, looking at the like, I know last year it was fairly competitive, the Holland stuff in it, but uh, Wiggins saying yeah. like Charlie White, he's on a he's on a few bob. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's it is. It's going to be a really competitive league. Like you've got your Portsmouth, who are always up there, like your Charlton's teams like that, like Wickham, who have just come down. Um, Rotherham so there's plenty there's plenty of, there's going to be plenty of competition up towards the top for you what are you sort of looking to, to get out there say so expecting as many minutes um, as you did last season or is it going to be a bit yeah yeah so obviously for me it's just obviously getting to the team earlier I mean like I said last year I had a lot more obstacles in the way and my first season was always going to take time but this season I really want to start with a bang and get obviously straight into the team, like on the open day. And obviously I know sometimes there's going to be like times where maybe I'm rested or if I'm not playing as well as I should. And obviously I'm, I don't expect to play every game, but I want to obviously have my effect on the team and be what be a starter. No, that's pretty good. Um, uh, it is fairly difficult, I'm assuming, at that age, because probably, you're probably going to be one of the youngest players in that area of the park in that league um, but yeah. you get some good experienced guys around you so I'm sure you'll, you'll, be, you'll be fine and the manager's also obviously very experienced at that level as well yeah exactly I mean, like I said there's a lot of experience and yeah obviously hopefully I can use like what I learned last year and build on that so the under 21s um, now that you're now that you're the Lewis Ferguson really of that group even though you've only had one season that's quite an inexperienced group but yeah yeah, I don't think there's many. I don't think there's many in senior football, really. Um, so, senior role for you potential as well. Uh, what was that? Sorry. My senior role, and, and, and I mean, who knows? Maybe Steve Clark will give you a call. But um, yeah, well, hopefully, yeah. Well, obviously, that's the ne- next step for me now. Is obviously, in terms of internationally, is yeah, try and break into the senior squad. But obviously when that comes you don't know um, like we saw with the 21s one last year it's like we spoke about it and then the next week I was in it so 